Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to complete last week's reviews. Finally, I know I'm so sorry. Like I said, my last week's schedule for work was insane. Um, I pretty much worked, well, I worked six days, full days um, at work in and different locations. Like I had to drive like an hour and a half one day to go to one uh, day of work. And then I had to drive about like maybe 40 minutes the other day. Um, and that, those are all key days where I normally try to edit things or, you know, stay up late and edit stuff. But I've been so physically drained this past week that I've just come home and laid down even if I didn't fall asleep I just laid in bed and played Marvel Future Fight on my phone and just kind of relaxed uh, it was just it's been that crazy. So I apologize for being so late on everything. The Batman channel, the gaming channel, like everything has fallen apart this past, uh, you know, week or so. And that's what happens sometimes with me with, uh, you know, full time job and everything. Uh, sometimes I just get overwhelmed and I need some space and time. So uh, thank you for being so patient waiting for me. I only recorded the absolute carnage one like last Friday and I just got to editing it um, sun late Sunday night and posting it uh, this morning. Uh, so yeah, I'm again, I'm so sorry, guys. So I'm trying to catch up now. And this week's uh, comics that come out tomorrow, uh, the Absolute Carnage ones, I think it's a Miles Morales issue and an Amazing Spider-Man tie-in issue. Um, I'm too broke to go buy them. I know that's only like $4, you know, for each comic, uh, but I just have, I have, right now I have $12 in my bank account. I just got dog food for Echo and, and a couple little things for the apartment as far as like, you know, little uh, TV dinners and stuff. And I left a couple TV dinners at work. So it's it's really tough right now for me to, to you know, spend any money. I got to save what is in there for gas just to make sure I get to work and stuff this week. So on Friday, get paid I will pick up comics Friday morning and we will catch back up on the reviews I promise uh, so with all that said and you know explaining myself and everything we have lethal protectors number two here we're going to talk about this briefly we might give away some spoilers but you know me I'm trying not to give away these comics entirely I hope you guys are going out and picking them up yourselves if you can um, you know I know some of you guys are in my situation where money's tight right now so I totally get it so um, hopefully you like this video we're going to talk about it but if you want a copy of this Boom, there's the digital code. First person to, you know, put that code in gets the comic. And there's only one. It only works one time. I'm sorry. So if you really want this book and you try to get it and you didn't, I'm so sorry. But we will give out every digital code for every book from uh, Absolute Carnage, you know, that comes out. So, you know, you'll get a chance to get two more books later this week when I pick up the, the ones that come out tomorrow. Um, so, yes, Lethal Protectors number two, written by Frank Thierry and uh, art by uh, Flaviano. It's, uh, yeah, Flaviano just... Flaviano, just one name. And uh, I like the art in this book, um, and I really like the opening. The opening has this voiceover, and we talked about that in like Absolute Carnage number three, how there was a, I felt an unnecessary voiceover on the first page of this one. This one actually works a little bit. You know, you have, uh, you know, someone talking, it's Carnage talking, saying, I will admit, you know, our Lord Null can be a demanding God, blah, blah, blah. But, they, but then you reveal that, uh, you know, why he's saying it. Uh, so you have Manwolf here, John Jameson transforming, and instead of getting the human into werewolf transformation or manwolf transformation we're getting the manwolf into carnage manwolf transformation which i like that they did that and the artwork looks really great and it's very close up and it's kind of reminds me of like american werewolf in london stuff although they don't show the paws on the ground you know uh, forming and the red tendrils coming around them that would have been really cool to do like a a, a a, you know, shot for shot uh, homage to that movie. That would have been really cool. Uh, but either way, still great little image here, great uh, setup. And then you have the reveal that Carnage is the one talking, or Dark Carnage, however you guys want to call him. And uh, and then you have his, uh, you know, the man wolf here, who's like now his servant or dog. And it's, it's weird because I kind of thought that's what Doppelganger was. Like Doppelganger was kind of like his little pet that he's you know sicked out on people doppelganger is still around but we don't really see a lot of doppelganger in these books which is a little bit of a bummer as a fan of doppelganger i was like that creature so i was kind of hoping to see more of him especially now that he doesn't have legs just like this four you know armed walking thing but he has you know the symbiote over him or something so you know we don't really see a lot of him although the other carnages all kind of look like that some of them have extra appendages and stuff so you know i guess he's I don't know, whatever. I guess uh, uh, he's not really a, a focal point of this, uh, which is a little bummer because, you know, Carnage went out of his way to merge D uh, Demo Goblin type spirit in with Shriek and make her the new Demo Goblin, which is neat, I guess. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of wondering, like, um, I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Because like, as, as a fan of, like, his, like, little you know, surrogate family that he's created with Shriek and Doppelganger and Carry On and stuff. I know Carry On's not around anymore, but it's kind of like I liked that dynamic and I was kind of hoping to see all of them play a part in a way, but then to take almost strip Shriek's personality away and make her a, a demon on top of everything, it kind of, I don't know, it's like I feel like there's not that, even though they kiss in another scene in this one, 
I, I don't know. I guess I still feel a disconnect there. Uh, it's it's not uh, it's dark carnage and dark shriek in a way. So I guess that makes sense. I don't know. I'm going off on a rant here because <laughs> I'm I'm probably overanalyzing. But the, but the book itself, at least, is fun. I didn't uh, dislike this book at all. Um, like I said, I like the artwork and I like the story. Uh, this one one page recap. Uh, I don't know if you really need it. I mean, it's issue two. Chances are, if someone bought this, they got issue one also, and they kind of know what happened uh but i guess you know referencing the cult of carnage one shot makes sense because maybe some people did miss out on that and it might make them want to go back and read it but they do a good job kind of re-explaining everything here of how misty knight ended up in the you know capture of cletus cassidy or carnage um they show john jameson turning on you know on her in the car becoming a werewolf biting her arm off um you know and then locking her up and stuff so they kind of recap that which is fine because they do it in one page so it's like hey at least they got it out of the way and they're moving on. Um, and then they have, you know, Carnage is like, I'm going to send Dima Goblin after Misty Knight. And uh, Misty Knight has a really clever way of staying, I guess, out of the, uh, the 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 knowledge. Like they're trying to track her through the sewers. She's running around the sewers. And it's immediately made me think of the uh, the Stegosaurus people or the, the dinosaur people from Mike Costa's run. I'm like, you know, if Venom wants an army to fight against the Carnage army, he technically could go find the the dinosaur people uh it really if he wants to i think that's that's in continuity and they're underneath new york that could actually be a fun twist you know eddie brock going to them he's like hey i don't have my suit anymore after what happened in issue three which you know i won't spoil here but you know or i won't spoil where the suit went uh but uh yeah eddie doesn't really have the suit again already uh, in the series and it could have him saying like hey dinosaur people i helped you out once can you help me out you know or something and then he could have his own army of uh, dinosaur people if he wanted to uh, i'm sure that's not going to pop up but i kind of wish seeing misty knight run around the sewers i was kind of like are we gonna see a dinosaur person that would be awesome um but uh, and like and like name one dinosaur person and make them like rise above the rest and and join the heroes or something i don't know i thought they you know might go that way but again me over analyzing everything as i always do uh but misty knight does have a clever way of staying out of the sight i guess of the carnage symbiotes in a weird way i, didn't, I don't know i guess this works because she does it uh but she's able to like knock out symbiotes like completely knock them out but i'm like okay i guess carnage has been knocked out before but not by brute force typically it's usually like sonics or fire or something like that so she's like literally knocking them out without her robot arm with her human arm um, or uh, someone else's arm in one case in this issue uh, she knocks them out and uh, and then she's like putting them over her and kind of walking around with them slumped over her so that way she's kind of off their radar in a way I guess I guess it works um, because I guess maybe they're trying to smell where she is and, and they can't when she's covered in a symbiote. But wouldn't that symbiote be active? Like, how could that get knocked out by a punt? I don't know. So, uh, again, overanalyzing. That's what I do. <laughs> but uh, but still, the book is fun. I, I thought that was a clever way of her to, like, sneak around. Uh, but then she sees how brutal these carnages are because a lot of them are inmates and uh, they're intense and, you know, they're extreme. And she sees, like, severed limbs and, and dismembered bodies and everything. Uh, but on one of them, she finds a cell phone. And again, I was like, hey, that's a great idea, too. And she's, like, moving around the area in the sewer she's at trying to get a signal. And I'm like, okay, th this is cool. It's building the tension it's like really well done and paced and the drawing's really great and you can see she's got like a black eye she's she's losing you know like and uh i mean she's staying alive she's surviving because she's misty knight but she's she's losing and she knows she's gonna she's her time is limited uh so this is her way out she's like all right i'm gonna try to call danny rand and she does and gets she gets through to danny rand and again this this takes place between issues one and two because one of my thoughts was hey why aren't their kids playing baseball in the street the sun is setting and they're playing baseball in the street and i'm like why are there just kids playing baseball like is like aren't there carnages running around this is before that has happened because this is when the carnages are have you know met and all, all come together at ravencroft after venom escape they haven't sent all the symbiotes out yet and you know which, which they didn't issue two um so i guess scream number one takes place after issue two because the symbiotes are running around all over the place uh, but in this one they're not out there yet so they start coming out of the sewers and iron fist comes across one and knocks one out and uh, there's this great banter between him and some kids and some kids want a selfie with him and they call him power man he's like oh actually i'm i'm iron fist i'm, I'm the other one in the group <laughs> and i was i was like oh that's kind of fun a little bit of humor there with danny um but then he gets a call he actually gets the call from um from you know misty knight and he's like all right we'll come to help so you know i don't want to go too much more past that but i will say finally danny rand uh puts together 
the the group that we've all been waiting for the group that's on the cover of issue one and this one at least the cover it's like all right it's misty in her costume which she's not wearing in the book um and then you have iron fist and there's De uh, demogoblin it's like okay maybe that'll probably happen in the next issue but it doesn't really happen this these two meet in this issue um but you know and he's in this issue so i guess that's the closest they've gotten so far on the covers um but uh but yeah the the group the from maximum carnage uh, that they put together um you know danny's starting to form them at the end of this one so it looks like in issue three we're finally going to get you know uh, morbius and deathlock and all these characters um we're finally going to get them cloak and dagger all uniting to come to misty knight's uh, aid and help her fight back and stuff so i'm looking forward to issue three i feel like issue three it, it's been a nice build up to it but with a three issue limited series i was kind of hoping to see them in more action in this one you do get a little bit though so i'm not complaining completely obviously uh, i'm just pointing it out uh, that I, I i've been wanting to see since cover number one i was like i want to see all these heroes fighting you know symbiotes and uh but i do admire that frank thierry is like you know what we're gonna build to that we're gonna show misty knight you know struggling to survive fighting for her life we're gonna tell a smaller story and then get to the big stuff for the third act and i gotta admit that i admire that because i feel like it's so easy and even in my mind i was like jump right into the action show these heroes fighting the symbiotes like show chaos everywhere and carnage and you know them fighting and the heroes and villains and uh, you know i that's where my mind went and frank did a better job in my eyes by doing the slower burn and building up to it so i like this issue i like this series so far and i like misty knight as a character i think she's great and frank got a nice nice handle on her but i'm really curious to see the since it is an emotional story to start with in a way and a, a more deeper personal story um i do want to you know hopefully see some kind of payoff to the the john jameson thing um you know like is he gonna turn back is he is there redemption for him like i i kind of hope at least frank touches on that because he's the one who kind of set it up in like the cult of carnage book and stuff and then now paying it off a little bit here so i hope that isn't those things aren't done in the main um absolute carnage book i hope that kind of pays off in this mini series uh, so yeah fingers crossed for that but otherwise you know like that's me speculating we'll find out what happens next month when the third issue comes out but for now you know i want to hear what you guys think what did you think of this book are you reading lethal protectors if you're not i would say definitely add it if you're like you know, being selective or because of budget, you're not sure which tie-ins you can get or afford. Um, I would say this is one that I would recommend. I, I like it. Frank Thierry is a great writer and I like what he's doing with it. He's having fun with it. And uh, and that's important in an event like this. There's like some levity in with all this intense stuff and there's a great balance of stuff with characters. Now there's some conveniences and shortcuts I feel like that are taken here too, but at the same time, it didn't hurt my overall enjoyment of the story. The story comes first to me and for this I loved and I like the artwork a lot too. So please go pick this up, add it to your pull list. If you don't have it, go pick up issue one. I think they're doing a second printing of some of these uh, tie-ins that if you missed them, don't worry. This coming week, I think tomorrow, there's some second printings of Absolute Carnage number one and two and some other tie-ins are getting uh, second printings as well. So that's great. That means these are selling well, which is awesome. So uh, again, let me know what your thoughts are down below, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever it is, let me know down below. And we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks again for being so patient with me on all my videos. I'll have some more coming up very, very soon. See you in the future. Peace.